name is Chuck Dandridge. I am uh, 66 years old. I'll be 67 this year. Thank God. Prior to my diagnosis, I was just going for a routine checkup. And the routine test revealed that there was something that was different in my uh, white blood cells that the doctor hadn't seen before. Even though it can manifest itself in African Americans, he just had never seen it in me. And so he said that, uh, let's take you a little further, let's have another blood test done and see if it is. But third test confirmed that there was something going on that was different than it had been in my, uh, for me. And so he sent me on to an oncologist to have it uh, further diagnosed. When I went over there, they didn't think it was cancer. It was diagnosed that I had what is called MDS, mild dysplastic syndrome, which is a precursor to leukemia. I never had any symptoms. I was just walking around doing my daily things, working out, enjoying life, and never felt ill or anything. But as the doctor explained to me as time went on, I would start to feel illness because my hemoglobin would go down and things would start to react. And so they wanted to get on top of it. So I went through a treatment program over there for about 10 months. Didn't get the numbers they wanted, and so then they decided to send me on up to UT Southwest. That's when I went into a clinical trial. The first clinical trial I did of two medication to arrest the MDS. AG221 was the medication. That was the pills I took in my first clinical trial. That was to bring my blast down from the 24 to three. After that got to three, the doctor decided that it was time to look at other options. And those other options were stem cell transplant. So now, instead of a bone marrow transplant, they were talking about a stem cell transplant. And so the stem cells were taken from my son. So my son was my donor, and it was called the Bellicum study. And so that was also a clinical trial. That was the second one. And as I understand, I'm the first one to have that procedure done in the United States. They took cells from my son, and they took those and sent them to Houston to be engineered. And then the process took about three and a half weeks. So I went into UT Southwestern Hospital for the uh, treatment and gave me a, a new immune system. It's been a journey that was complete because my family was so supportive of me. You know, I had my wife, went through a, a lot as I went through this process. I have a, a daughter who was supportive, I have a son-in-law who was supportive, and I have a grandson. So they've all been a part of this process along with a lot of family and friends and a lot of prayer warriors. So I think that when you have that kind of support system, it makes your process a lot easier. What I would say to people is that you need to listen to your doctors, take the information they're giving you, and make an assessment. And I think that there are so many things out there now that can help to eradicate this disease. I think we just need to you know, make an effort to get in those trials and take part in them. There's a team of doctors who worked on my case, and nurses and you know, medical professionals, and so you listen to what they tell you, and you follow the direction, and you, you know, things work out. So I would just encourage all people to just listen to that input, assess it, talk it over with your family, and uh, make your decision. And obviously, obviously there's risk. You know, you're going to a trial, but you either weigh it, which is better for you to take that risk and get it done. And what you're doing may help others. And so that's where we kind of looked at it. The, the research that was going on, whether it was successful or not with me, it would help others in the future. I feel good when I go to the doctor. The numbers are good. My hemoglobin is up. All my blood counts are up. And I'm a, a living proof of the fact that a clinical trial saved my life. It's just good news.